Hello, fictional. Welcome to the crossover What Ifs. Today we are gonna see, What If Naruto Got Harem with Urza, Lucy and Marahin. Part 1. Huge shout out to D-E-M-O-N-K-N-I-G-H-T-939 for this story. If you end up liking this video, please consider subscribe, so without further ado, let's get into the video. Fate seemed to have a penance for symbolism. It was a hundred years ago when Hashirama and Madara battled for the fate of the elemental nation, one believing that peace could be achieved through understanding and unity. The other believing that humans were incapable of understanding one another, that power was needed in order to force the concept of peace to exist. Now arriving at the climax of the Fourth Great Shinobi War, Naruto Uzumaki and Sasuke Uchiha stood on opposite ends of the battlefield, both sharing almost identical values and thought processes as that of their predecessors. They battled. Fist against fist, chakra against chakra, ideals of peace through unity, clashing against ideals of peace through power. In the end fate deemed that their battle had to end once more with both utterly exhausted and their surrounding damaged and devastated beyond repair. A Rasengan materializing on Naruto's palm as he stared above at his rival and friend. A Chidori manifesting on Sasuke's hand as he stared down at admittedly his best friend and rival as well. They wasted no time and moved at once, the gap between both shinobis closing quickly, as this was a battle that neither could afford to lose. But the mighty thrust from both men, their attacks connected, the Rasengan facing and clashing once more with the Chidori. They put every ounce of energy and being into their final attack, neither backing down as the fate of the shinobi world was at stake, the end result culminating into a massive interdimensional sphere that overtook both shinobis' form and shielded them away from the prying eyes of the elemental nation. Sasuke woke up with a cough, painfully gasping and wincing as his body hurt all over. He instinctively shifted slightly and hissed as even more pain registered in his nervous system. Despite all he had gone through and despite how many times his body ended up wrapped in a casket, never in his life had he ever experienced so much pain and utter fatigue. It took a great deal of effort not to fidget or move, but Sasuke was determined to stay still, not in the mood or in the condition to handle any more pain in his system. He frowned at the thought. He felt so weak and pathetic. A chuckle vibrated through the air, the last Ichiha didn't have to turn his head to know who it was from. Beath it's how I felt when I woke up too. Naruto spoke up, inwardly grimacing as his voice sounded weak even to his own ears. Sasuke shifted his head to the right and was promptly rewarded with a view of his rival and best friend, lying down on the floor, purple bruises, discoloration, and blood found all over his body. It wasn't a stretch to say that it looked like a violent mob found and beat up the blonde for weeks. There's no need to look at me like that Sasuke or in the exact same condition as I am. Sasuke looked back up, gazing into what seemed like a sky of pitch black darkness. Where are we? I don't know. Naruto shrugged his shoulders. All I do know is that, that portal. It's our ticket back home, I can sense the Senjutsu chakra of our world, along with the chakra of everyone else on the other side of whatever that is, but the portal was a lot larger when I first saw it. The last Ichiha sat up, clenching his jaw and bawling his fist as pain assaulted him once more. He exhaled sharply and waited for the pain to subside before he could focus and see what the blonde was talking about. Approximately five seconds later and Sasuke found himself frowning as his eyes landed on a glowing white circle, far too small in size, the diameter of the portal being roughly around two-thirds the size of his fist. That's far too small for us. Naruto closed his eyes. I know. Stealing himself for the pain about to come, Naruto pushed himself in a seated position and barely quelled the urge to hiss as his nerve center was flooded with pain. It was difficult ignoring the agony that afflicted him, but the Jinchuriki managed as he turned his attention towards his friend. Sasuke, it's over for us, but that doesn't mean that it should be over for everyone else, help me release them from the infinite Tsukiyomi. The last Ichiha slowly shifted his gaze back onto the blonde. Why? Why do you persist in always fighting me? Why is it that no matter what I do, you are always the one who is opposing me? Naruto scoffed. That's because you're always making the wrong choice, even earlier you wanted to enslave the world in order to create peace, and that is not the way to go about it. As your friend, the responsibility is onto me to make you understand that what you're doing is wrong. Free and you have always called me your friend even after I tried to kill you what does that word mean to you? Sasuke softly questioned. Now is not the time you idiot, we don't have a low until I get an answer, I will not help you release them from the infinite Tsukiyomi. He threatened. Naruto sighed and shook his head. It's hard to put into words, all I know is that when you're hurt, I feel hurt too. You're asking me why I oppose you all the time? It's because it pains me when I see you all Alanetto me a friend is someone who you care about and would go to the end of the world for. Saying that Sasuke was stunned into silence was putting it lightly, not at all expecting the confession made by the normally dense blonde. In his utterly drained state, Sasuke felt too exhausted to cling to the rage and hate that he normally surrounded himself. 
now free from the influence of his darker emotions and having just heard the response made by his only friend, the gravity of his actions finally dawned on him, as he realized just how badly he messed up with his friend, his teammates, and every person who ever cared about him. An explosion of all-consuming guilt erupted within the last Ichiha's chest, suffocating him with intense feelings of shame and regret, and permanently snuffing out the fire within him that demanded he incinerate all those who opposed him. The last Ichiha felt his lips tremble and the beginning of tears appearing at the edge of his eyes, he hastily turned his head the other way, not wanting the blonde to see him look any more pathetic than he already was. Naruto felt his eyes soften as he caught sight of the tear that slid down Sasuke's cheek as he turned away. Sasuke, we don't have much time left to have to release everyone, that includes the tailed beasts. If not for how attentively he was paying attention to his friend, Naruto would have missed the small, almost unnoticeable nod that Sasuke sent him. Alright. So consumed by guilt and shame, it was only natural that the last surviving member of the Ichiha clan would lose the will to right his wrongs, and that would have most definitely been the case, had it not been for the feeling of immense gratitude that Sasuke felt for the blonde. The feeling of gratitude that demanded he do right by the only one who stood by him despite how low he sunk. Sasuke still didn't agree with Naruto's point of view, but he'd be damned if in his last moments he didn't stand by his friend, no his brother, he'd be damned if he didn't stand by his brother, after everything the guy had endured and sacrificed for him. That was why despite not sharing the same view, Sasuke vowed that he will do right by his brother and help him release everyone from their imprisonment. The last Ichiha turned towards the blonde, his arm extended, and his fist currently forming half of what was supposed to be the rat hand seal. Naruto felt relief and sent the Ichiha a grin. About damn time. He wasted no time and promptly helped his friend complete the rat seal. Release. Release. They both simultaneously yelled, the tailed beast's chakra within Naruto and the Rinnegan in Sasuke's eye socket flaring. Seconds passed before a massive smile overcame Naruto's features as he sensed everyone's chakra start to liven up again. It worked, they're waking up from the infinite Tsukiyomi. The confused frown plastered itself on Sasuke's visage as he looked over toward his happy friend. How can you tell? Naruto rubbed the back of his head. It's hard to describe, but before the infinite Tsukiyomi, everyone's chakra felt more love. It just felt more animated and real databeo. When everyone got caught up in that jutsu, the feel of their chakra was just still, so still that one would think it was one of those toad statues back in Mount Mayaboku. The Ichiha raised an eyebrow. Toad statues. Long story. He dismissed his question. Point is, I can sense that their chakra returned back to how it was before the infinite Tsukiyomi happened. Sasuke nodded. That is good news, then I suppose the only thing left would be to free the Bijuus from the Chibaku Tensei. The blonde shinobi watched quietly as the Rinnegan flared once more, the six Tomo spinning rapidly before they slowed down once more and eventually came to a halt. Are they free? He softly asked. His question was met with a nod. Relief flooded the Kanoha shinobi as he gently lied back down on the floor. Thank you. Sasuke closed his eyes and mirrored his friend by planting his back on the ground. You're welcome. He whispered drowsily. Exhaustion was rapidly closing in on Sasuke, and had he opened his eyes to peer to the right, he would have noticed that his friend had already lost the battle to stay conscious. It was but a few seconds later that sleep had also claimed the last Ichiha. Time skip. Three hours later. Erg. Naruto woke up screaming in pain, heavy tears quickly forming and cascading down to his cheeks, as what felt like boiling, steaming water was poured out all over his chest and stomach. So intense was the pain, the shinobi almost blacked out. Sasuke looked over worriedly, wide awake once his friend's pained yelling reached his ears, panic gripped the former Avenger as he tried to understand what was happening to his best friend and why nothing seemed to be happening to him. Mind running rampant with theories, the first one to come to mind was what was perhaps the biggest biology factor that separated Naruto from him. Sasuke's eyes widened as he instantly understood the reasoning behind Naruto's predicament. Naruto. It's the QB within you. The blonde gritted his teeth and shakily nodded, he tried to summon as much willpower as he could and managed to successfully generate the amount needed to appear within his subconsciousness, albeit barely. Within moments, Naruto appeared in his subconsciousness, eyes wide as he took in the scene of Kurama rasping in agony, fists clenched as his form glowed an ominous white. It took a tremendous amount of effort on his part to not drop to his knees and succumb to the pain, but for the sake of his friend, Naruto needed to endure and stay strong. What's happening to us Kurama? What's happening to you? Erg. Yin Kurama gritted his teeth, finding this predicament to be the most painful experience of his life. It's because only half my soul is here, Naruto I don't have much time so listen carefully. Souls can't be separated, at least not between worlds, I never had a problem, because though my soul was separated since I was sealed within your father, my other half was within you, it still lied in the same universe. 
But nothing was happening to you when I was inside here hours ago. So why are you suffering now? Naruto questioned, panic clear in his voice. Hirama breathed deeply, wincing as even the act of drawing air hurt. Nothing was happening because that portal was still open, providing me with a connection to my other half, it's about to close for good, and due to my connection with my other half who is still present in the elemental nation, the space between dimensions is forcing me out against my will. Who listen. I can't stop this, within a minute I'll be gone, but I'm leaving you with my chakra, that should be able to prevent you from dying even after I'm gone, but you need to get out of this place immediately, it may not seem like it, but this place is killing you on the inside. Against his will, Naruto felt his body tremble as he shakily stared at the one who's been with him since birth. Kurama please don't go, I don't know what to do without you. Kurama felt his eyes soften for his container, an indomitable amount of sadness weighing on the strongest biju as he gazed into the teary eyes of his first and only friend. I'm sorry kid, but I have every ounce of faith that you will find a way out of here. The white glow around the QB intensified in its brightness, Naruto took a step back and raised his forearms to shield himself from the light, missing the thankful smile that Kurama sent towards the blonde for accepting him and saving him along with his siblings. Goodbye Naruto. The light illuminated the whole sower and within seconds the strongest biju was gone. Aura grew in the pits of Naruto's stomach as he heard his friend's words, he dropped his arms and fretfully looked around for the massive fox. Kurama where are you? He bellowed desperately. He searched all over his mindscape, white-hot panic, grasping a hold of him as seconds passed without him finding his desired result. So frightened by the prospect of being alone, the shinobi failed to notice that he was no longer in pain. Tears grew at the edge of Naruto's eyes, as despite his intense searching, his massive and easy-to-spot friend was nowhere to be found. Please don't go. He whispered quietly. So consumed by despair, the shinobi lost the strength to hold himself up as his knees dropped, silently sobbing as the implications of what happened hit him with the force of a speeding train. Back in the real world, Sasuke worriedly looked over his friend as his shoulders shook unceremoniously. Naruto what happened? Silence was the blonde's response as he sobbed over the loss of his friend. Built gripped the last Ichiha as he eyed his friend. What have I done? Sasuke looked down sullenly, utterly regretting the choices that led him to his path, what was worse was the fact that it wasn't just him that was suffering from his mistakes. He laid a comforting hand on the blonde's shoulder, finding the action to be awkward, but willing to do what he had to do to help. Nearly half an hour passed since then, until Naruto finally managed to quell his crying, as he gazed towards his raven-haired friend, eyes red-rimmed from the tears, and causing another surge of guilt to pop up within the Ichiha's chest. Naruto breathed slowly, still sniffing every few seconds. We need to get out of here now Sasuke, before Kurama disappeared. Sasuke winced as he instantly noticed the immense pain that showed itself on the now ex-Jinchuriki's visage. He said that this place is killing us from the inside, do you have enough chakra to get us out of here? I do but barely. Sasuke shakily stood up, gritting his teeth as even the act of standing up caused him immense pain. The pain that the blonde similarly experienced as he got up as well. Can you take us back to the elemental nation? He questioned seriously, no hint of cheer or affection present, as he addressed Indra's reincarnation. Sasuke almost hesitated answering as he peered into Naruto's red-rimmed eyes. I'll be blunt with you Naruto, I only have chakra enough to open only one portal, and I don't know where that portal will lead us, we might get back home, or we could end up in an entirely different world, either way there is no going back if we go now. Are you certain that we must leave now? The ex-Jinchuriki nodded. Kurama said immediately, I'm willing to put my trust in life in his words. Very well. Sasuke utilized his chakra as fuel, and through his rinnegan, formed a purple portal large enough for both of them to fit in just around 5 meters away. I can't hold it for long so let's go. Naruto nodded, and with that they wasted no time, both of them walking side by side as they headed towards their ticket to freedom. Sasuke breathed harshly as he trudged his way to the portal, vision blurring as he and the blonde crept closer to their way out of here. Naruto was faring slightly better, hope blooming in his soul that they would return back to their homeworld. They were so close. The fall went according to how he wanted it and Naruto desperately hoped that was the case, he'd see everyone including Kurama safe and sound. It was rather unfortunate that fate was not that merciful. Sasuke coughed out a heavy dose of blood, knees smashing into the floor as he gripped his chest with one hand, while the other helped him steady himself on the floor. Sasuke. Are you alright what happened? Naruto turned and looked over his friend worriedly, not noticing the flickering portal on his side. I'll arg. Ili'll be alright, let's go. He answered through pain breathing, forcing more chakra in his dejutsu in order to stabilize the portal. Despite his less than stellar condition, Naruto wrapped an arm around his friend's lower back, gently helping him up, while simultaneously ignoring the agony he inflicted on his muscles. Sasuke wasn't oblivious to that fact, nodding gratefully towards the blonde. 
they slowly limp their way towards the portal, Naruto not feeling at all comforted as the sound of his best friend's labored breaths met his ears. But if there was one thing the blonde could take comfort in, it was in knowing that they now were just six feet away, they could definitely make it. If only their troubles didn't follow them. Sasuke felt himself rapidly losing chakra, his reserves quickly nearing his depleted state, dread and trepidation engulfed the last Ichiha as he realized that despite being only four feet away, they wouldn't make it. Mind running rampant with thoughts, he tried to think of anything that could change their fate and ended up arriving at one grim conclusion. They wouldn't make it. But that didn't mean that he would fail his best friend and brother. Summoning every ounce of will and power in his being, Sasuke pushed his startled and wide-eyed friend into the portal, just as it started to flicker away from existence, sending a soft and thankful smile through bloody lips for the brother who pulled him out of the darkness. That was the last thing a horrified Naruto saw before the portal vanished away from existence. Location. Magnolia Town. Warahin waved and smiled beautifully towards the citizens of the town, oblivious to the blushes she evoked out of the men, as they gazed at her with dreamy, heart-shaped eyes. She hummed melodically, elegantly carrying a couple bags of grocery in her right hand as she ambled her way back to the guild. It didn't take her long to arrive at the doorsteps of the guild, and Mira fought the urge to giggle as she easily heard the sound of everyone fighting inside the bar. Being rowdy was practically tradition at this point. Mira only hoped that Lucy wouldn't be intimidated by their eccentric behavior, though considering she did come back with Natsu and Macau, one couldn't blame her for being optimistic. She pushed open the door and walked inside, carefully moving around to dodge the various projectiles, be it bottles, shoes, barrels, and elfmen. Her eyes widened marginally, and she quickly dived away, just as her humongous brother landed on the spot she was formerly in. Mira looked over to the grocery bags and sighed in relief at the sight of the products being undamaged from her sudden plunge. She got up and glared at the one responsible for tossing her brother right towards her, eyes locked on the uncomfortably smiling Grey as he looked over to the side, feeling skittish and awkward when he had Mira of all people glaring at him. Out of the corner of his eyes he saw Natsu launch some unfortunate mage to the nearby wall, the sight of his rival evoked feelings of bloodlust within the ice-wielding mage. Letting out a cry of rage, Grey charged towards the pink-haired idiot, eager to teach him a lesson and beat the ever-living shit out of him. Mira shook her head in fond exasperation. Natsu and Grey will always be Natsu and Grey. She thought amusedly. The dainty hand gently squeezed her shoulder, and Mira looked over just to be greeted to the welcoming sight of soft and kind chocolate brown eyes, belonging to Fairy Tail's newest member. Are you okay Mira? Lucy asked concernedly. The takeover mage smiled kindly at the younger girl. I'm alright Lucy, thank you for asking. How do you like Fairy Tail so far? She inquired while heading towards the bar. Lucy beamed at the cover model as she walked with her side by side. It's amazing, sure everyone is crazy, except you Mira, but everyone is super nice and friendly to me except for Loki. She spewed out his name in annoyance. Mira barely suppressed a snicker as her thoughts went towards Fairy Tail's resident playboy. I wouldn't think too much about it Lucy, it's nothing against you personally, he just she tried to explain his reasoning, but only drew blanks. Well, I have no idea why to be honest, no one knows why he's scared of celestial wizards, but trust me when I say that he'll warm up to you. I hope so, he may be a bit of a pervert playboy, but that doesn't mean he's a bad person. The brown-eyed blonde stated softly. Surprise decorated the barmaid's features as she gazed at the blonde wizard, taken aback by the younger women's mature outlook in life. Surprise quickly transitioned into approval and warmth, and Mira couldn't help but squeal as she set down the bags on the stool and excitedly hugged the startled blonde. You're so cute. Lucy blushed and felt like she could die happily, her idol called her cute. She was so happy. Thank you Mira. Mira unwrapped her arms from the younger women and stepped back, smiling a bit sheepishly, do forgive me for the sudden hug, I'm afraid I couldn't resist the urge. Lucy shook her head and smiled widely. No, no, I didn't mind at all, actually it was kinda nice. She admitted, face a bit flushed. Well in that case you can expect a lot of cuddles and hugs between us, we're sisters now. Mira declared. Another surge of joy exploded within Lucy as she nodded her head enthusiastically, the smile on her face not possibly being able to stretch any wider than it already was. Off to the side, Kana smiled as she heard the entire conversation. She hadn't meant to eavesdrop, but once aware of the conversation, she couldn't help but listen some more, curiosity driving her to stay despite proper etiquette telling her not to. Trust Mira to be so affectionate to their newest wizard. And Lucy Kana couldn't blame Mira from hugging the cutie when she almost succumbed to the same urge herself. Ah, may as well just do it. She thought cheerfully. Seconds later Lucy squeaked as Kana glomped her from behind, she looked over her shoulder just to be awarded with the sight of mischievous large brown doe eyes. Oh Lucy you're so cute, can we be sisters too? She asked while delivering the best puppy dog eyed look she could muster. Lucy smiled. 
Sure, I'd be happy to have another person to call a sister but can you let go of my breasts? She asked annoyedly at the end. Hana grinned sheepishly. Yeah of course. She swiftly let go of the celestial wizard's large soft beep, part of her already regretting heeding the blonde's words. Off to the side, Mira gazed at the scene amusedly. Alright ladies, I think we've bonded enough for now, why don't you both be a dear and help me with the groceries? She gave out her own version of the puppy dog eye look. Having been on the receiving end of that look more times than she'd like, Kana managed to avoid gazing into Mira's arguably best weapon just in the nick of time. Sorry Mira, but I still haven't finished drinking from my barrel, and I don't need Mikau or Wakaba drinking my booze. She unwrapped her arms from Lucy and cheerfully walked away. Before Lucy could utter a word, a purple portal materialized centimeters below the ceiling and unceremoniously dropped the unconscious ex Jinchiriki towards the unsuspecting girls. When surprised screams rang out throughout the guildhall as the extremely fatigued shinobi fell on top of both female mages. Everyone promptly stopped their fighting to gaze curiously at the scene, intrigued by the events. Hana, who hadn't gotten far away and also the closest mage nearby, turned towards the downed figures to inspect the situation, just to be gripped by horror, as she noticed the various bruises, injuries and blood that decorated the strange man's person. Oh god. Someone get Puryusuka now. She bellowed while gently trying to carry the muscled blonde. Henshin quickly set in on the shoulders of all the fairy tale wizards, as they comprehended the brunette's words, Jet swiftly dashing away in order to retrieve the guild's finest doctor. Apprehension and terror quickly grew in the pits of Elfman's stomach as he approached the downed figures. Mira. Big sis. He called out desperately. I'm okay Elfman don't worry, me and Lucy are okay. Mira assured him, not noticing the state of the blonde man on top of her. We're alright, we were just caught off guard Lucy added, also unaware of Naruto's current physical condition. Elfman gently picked up the unconscious shinobi, allowing the girls to finally move and stand up just for their reaction to Mira Kana's, as they got a good look on the man who fell on them. Oh dear. What happened to the poor soul? Mira couldn't help but question. I don't know but he needs desperate medical attention now. Kana stated seriously. Mira nodded before turning towards her brother. Elfman, have him placed in one of the beds of the medical wing said giant immediately nodded and set off to do exactly that. Mira turned her attention to everyone else. Kana go inform master of what happened and everyone else, be on guard just in case someone is coming after him. Lucy looked on worriedly, soft and warm chocolate brown eyes filled to the brim with concern for her fellow blonde. Naruto felt nauseous as he woke up. Bleary and fatigued eyes blinking rapidly and seeing nothing but all-consuming light before he shut his eyelids tight. The shinobi breathed steadily, slowly feeling the strength return to him before he opened his eyes once more. What ended up greeting him was a world of blurriness and unfocus. Such a sight was much more preferable to seeing nothing but blinding white, but for the still out of it blonde, he felt the effects of seeing nothing but blur affect his consciousness and cause a mind-splitting headache to form. He winced and clenched his eyes shut, unable to handle even the least bit of pain, while still so heavily exhausted as he was, a groan escaping his lips and conveying to the world just how uncomfortable he currently was feeling. The gasp resounded in the air before the sound of feet rapidly thumping against the floor echoed across the room, not soon after Naruto felt an indescribably soft hand lay itself on his forehead, before said hand moved behind in order to cup and gently lift the back of his head. Here, drink this. It should help with the fever. Naruto felt the edges of a cup get placed between his lips, before a steady stream of water entered his mouth and rejuvenated him with energy that he had been sorely lacking. Normally the former Jinchuriki would have thought twice before accepting a drink in an unfamiliar environment, but in his extremely weakened and dehydrated state, and coupled that with the knowledge that whoever was with him could have killed him in his sleep, but chose not to. Well that helped ease his apprehensions by a great margin. Disappointment welled in the shinobi's chest as the supply of water quickly decreased before it stopped entirely. Before he could make his displeasure known he heard the sound of another pair of feet thudding on the ground before eventually stopping right near him. The now empty cup was then removed and promptly replaced with another one, Naruto inwardly sighed in relief and gratitude at the thoughtfulness of his unknown caretakers. Once having finished draining the cup of all its contents, Naruto sat upright and opened his eyes and waited patiently, as his blurred vision started to focus before the first thing he could make out was a pair of large blue eyes that seemed to exude nothing but concern. As his vision repaired itself, he could see that the gentle pair of blue eyes belonged to a very beautiful and pleasantly smiling white-haired girl garbed in a maroon full-body gown. The glance to his right revealed another pair of eyes, brown in color, but just as large and exuding the same amount of concern as the first pair of eyes he's seen, this time belonging to a beautiful blonde girl garbed in a white and blue striped shirt and wearing a short skirt for the bottom. Are you okay? The brown-eyed blonde asked gently, worry clinging to her tone and audible enough for the shinobi to hear. 
Naruto nodded. I'm out right and you both for the water and for taking care of me. The ivory-haired women clasped a gentle hand on the shinobi's shoulder. It was no problem, is there anything we can do to help you with at the moment? I'm Arahin by the way, but you can call me Mira. And I'm Lucy. The female blonde smiled kindly at the former Jinchuriki. Said former Jinchuriki nodded gratefully at the pair before he pushed himself off the bed and stood up. Naruto, Naruto Uzumaki and thank you for the thought Mira, but there is no need to worry about me. Mira shook her head disapprovingly. But you were out for three days. Naruto blinked in shock. What? It's true. Lucy stepped forward, chocolate brown eyes filled to the brim with worry. And you were so hurt. I've never in my life seen someone who was just so haunted. The shinobi absorbed the information told to him, feeling a pit of dread swell in his stomach as he tried to recall what exactly caused him to be in such a state and failed miserably. He looked over the pair, gaze switching between the two and unintentionally showcasing a touch of panic. How did I arrive here? Was there anyone else with me? He asked anxiously. Mira shook her head softly. No one arrived here but you, as for how you air of it neither of us saw it, but a couple of our guildmates said that you fell from a purple portal that formed on our ceiling before it disappeared. Purple portal. Naruto repeated slowly. Suddenly, the events of the entire fourth great shinobi war, the battle between him and Sasuke, waking up in a black void, getting separated from Kurama, Sasuke sacrificing himself. The memories all returned back to him with great clarity, hitting him with the force of a tsunami and causing the shinobi to gasp. And with the return of his memories came the startling realization that he was in an entirely different dimension, with no way to return back and without ever being able to see his friends ever again. And Sasuke hesitated. Naruto staggered back a couple of steps, falling back on the floor and immediately drawing the girls to him, as his face paled an unnatural degree, gasping and wheezing harshly, as the harsh truth of reality coiled itself around his neck and pulled with the strength of a rampaging biju. What's wrong? Talk to me Naruto Mira hurriedly kneeled and grasped his shoulders, looking over him worriedly, as she attempted to understand what caused the formerly calm shinobi to be having a panic attack. Mira's worry only deepened as she noticed the tears trickled down from Naruto's cheek before she pulled him into a comforting hug, hands soothingly stroking his broad back as he sobbed silently into her chest. Lucy wasn't content with being idle and gently hugged him from behind, seeking to aid her fellow guildmate in comforting the disheartened blonde. It was roughly around 20 minutes later that Naruto managed to rein in his sorrow, eyes red-rimmed from all the crying, as he slowly extracted himself from both girls' hold and got up. Lucy and Mira joined him as they gazed at him concernedly. He looked at the pair and nodded gratefully. Thank you both for taking care of me and Forthus. He awkwardly tried to gesture to the hug, his eyes drifted to the wet spot on Mira's shirt, and he sent her an apologetic look. Sorry about that. Mira grasped his shoulder and smiled gently. No need to apologize for that Naruto, and there is no need to thank us either, we were only doing what was right. Lucy nodded wholeheartedly before she gazed at him with soft eyes. If there is anything we can do to help, please let us know. Thank you. He replied to her kindly before turning to the ivory-haired waitress. Both of you, I won't forget the kindness you both have showed me, and I promise to repay you both for that. Farewell Marahan, Lucy. Having said his piece, he removed Mira's hand off his shoulder before walking away. Or attempted to as he felt a pair of dainty hands grasp onto his wrist. Wait. Lucy pleaded. Naruto looked over the blonde women, confusion clouding his features as he eyed her. Um. Lucy looked down and fidgeted slightly underneath his gaze. She took a few moments to consider and contemplate the possibilities that would come with going through with her decision, a pretty big decision that if she were to go through, could invite the serious kind of trouble that she did not need at this vulnerable time of her life. Lucy peered back up and instantly made her mind, she wasn't certain if she was making the right decision by doing this, but seeing the broken and downtrodden look that permeated his eyes, solidified her decision for her. If you want you can stay at my place until Yauva sorted out everything. Naruto blinked in shock, Mira mirrored his feelings as her eyes widened in complete surprise. I'm sorry but did you just say? He couldn't help but question. The blonde stellar mage nodded a bit shyly before she straightened up, trying to present herself with confidence. You yeah, assuming that you can't create a portal back to your home and that seems to be the case, I don't mind letting you stay if you don't have nowhere to go. It took a few seconds before Naruto was able to give her a response, stunned by the women's trust and compassion. Thank you, truly it's very nice of you to offer Lucy, but I'll be alright. He said softly, sending her a thankful genuine smile, the first one of its kind ever since the start of the Great Shinobi War. Growing up in the Shinobi world, Naruto was hammered with the knowledge that help always came with a steep price. His upbringing as a Jinchuriki only solidified that point, and the fact was, whenever the third Hokage or his sensei Kakashi or someone else from Konoha helped him, they usually did it expecting that he in turn would fight be a better Shinobi in the service for Konoha. 
seldomly did someone help in the shinobi world without wanting or expecting anything in return. For the former Jinchuriki who for the majority of his life was shunned and hated on and rarely received any honest help outside of a few exceptions one really couldn't blame Naruto for feeling touched at the level of generosity and compassion shown towards him. It is true that I'm really far away from my home, but I can manage don't worry. But touched or not, Naruto did not intend on imposing on the women's kindness any more than he already had. Though she may have not acknowledged it on a conscious level, Lucy couldn't help but feel relief at his answer, she may have offered to let him stay with her, but such a notion didn't diminish the slight fear she held of someone she didn't know, a man at that, living in such close proximity to her. Was she going to refuse him if he did end up agreeing? Hell no. She was truly sincere in her offer of letting him in her home, but she'd be lying if she said a part of her didn't feel scared at the prospect of a guy she didn't know very well living in her home. Alright, but if it does turn out that you have nowhere to go to, just know that my home is open to you. She stated earnestly as she let go of his wrist. Naruto smiled gratefully. Thank you Lucy. Well if you'd like. Mira spoke up, dragging the shinobi's attention to her. You can stay here in fairy tale till our master returns, he's one of the ten wizard saints, and he's really knowledgeable and wise, I have no doubt in mind that he'd be able to help you, we do have a few beds in the basement that you can use in the meantime. She suggested. I need some time to come to a decision. He replied quietly while walking towards the door, understanding the necessity of keeping his options open at especially dire times. He stopped once a feet away and looked over his shoulder to lock gazes with the ivory-haired mage. I'll give you my answer by tomorrow and thank you both again. Without further ado, Naruto walked out of the guild infirmary and left the female mages to gaze sadly at the spot he once stood. Mira sighed. I do hope things get better for him, it's obvious that he's going through a lot. She remarked, heart clenching painfully as she recalled how frail and broken he seemed when in her arms. Lucy nodded sullenly. Ye seems like a really good person. Both girls stayed in the infirmary quietly for nearly a minute before walking out. Naruto laid back against the tree bark, feeling utterly defeated. Nearly an hour had passed since his interaction with the girls from Fairy Tail. Regardless, Naruto had walked swiftly through the streets of Magnolia, his heart still reeling from the realization that he was in another dimension with seemingly no way to return back home. Eventually he had made it to a secluded part of the forest and in a desperate measure to try to return back to the elemental nation, attempted to use the summoning jutsu just for that to fail spectacularly. Still Naruto wasn't one to give up just because he failed once, and that prompted him in attempting again and again and again, each time increasing the usage in chakra, only for no summoning toad to appear. Eventually Naruto had grown so frustrated that he used half of his currently available reserves, desperation and bits of hope creeping up to his chest, as he slammed his hand on the ground and waited anxiously to be greeted by any of his summons. Nothing not even a blasted tadpole appeared. That was why one Naruto Uzumaki, a shinobi renowned for his optimism and his happy, almost naive outlook on life, sat against the tree, head tilted down in defeat, as he slowly came to terms with the fact that he was stuck here permanently. He sat there for seemingly forever, his mind for once devoid of thoughts and body, so still that if a random civilian or mage were to stumble upon him, they'd think the blonde to be asleep. Many hours had passed by since then, and nightfall had arrived. The moon in all its glimmering radiance easily illuminating the forest and the despondent shinobi within it. Naruto sighed before he got up, planting his feet on the bark of the tree, before he started to scale up on it and hopefully find a strong and sturdy branch to sleep on. It didn't take long before the shinobi found a wide bow and swiftly laid his back on it, gaze locked on the star-filled night sky. Was he feeling absolutely crushed? No. Naruto was very well aware that the circumstances definitely could have been worse than they were now. After all the entire shinobi world was now saved from the effects of the infinite Tsukiyomi, and his friend Kurama wasn't dead. He just didn't expect to be still living to be alive in another world all by himself, with Sasuke giving up his life in order for him to make it. Knowing that he failed in saving Sasuke it sucked it, it really sucked, but he could at least take much solace in knowing that everyone in the elemental nation was alive and well, even if he wouldn't be able to see or hang out with any of his precious people ever again. And if he had to be honest with himself. Part of the reason he wasn't extremely torn up about Sasuke's death was because he wasn't as close to him as he would have liked to be. That fueled the guilt within him as he wondered what kind of friend was he to not be so heartbroken over his friend's death. Naruto closed his eyes, dousing away the growing sadness within his soul and willing himself to not think about his comrades and friends any more than he already had. Instead, he elected to think about what he needed to do now, like it or not, he had to adapt to the new world quickly, or it all would have been for nothing for Sasuke to sacrifice himself. Naruto was not gonna let that happen. That much he vowed. 
While still nowhere near close to healing from his recent wounds, Naruto finally managed to accept his situation enough in order to at least not let his best friend's sacrifice be in vain. So what if he was in a new world? He was Naruto funking Uzumaki, and he could overcome anything. I just have to take it one step at a time. The shinobi thought determinedly. Time skip. 15 hours later, 5 o'clock p.m. Mira bit her lips, barely quelling the urge to laugh as Loki grew horrified once he caught sight of the celestial keys that dangled on the side of Lucy's wide hips, promptly running away and leaving an amused barmaid and a peeved stellar mage. Lucy huffed what the hell is his problem? No idea. Naruto spoke up from behind the girl, causing her to jump and scream in fright. He smiled at her reaction. Hi. Lucy wasn't amused. Don't sneak up on me like that. Mira giggled as she walked over, drawing the startled shinobi into a hug. I'm happy you came. Naruto did not know what to say, electing instead to return her hug before they eventually stepped back from one another. I thought about it for some time, and I don't see the harm in staying till I meet your master. Arguably one could say that it was information and not deception that was a shinobi's best weapon. Having been taught the value and necessity of having information, Naruto had set out this morning into the library, creating a hundred clones who hinged into different appearances of people he had met or seen back in the elemental nation. After that it was just opening up books and soaking in every detail there was to know about the continent and the world, its history, culture, rules, and to his surprise magic. He stayed in the library for only five hours, but considering he had a hundred clones studying alongside him, he got information worth five hundred hours in the span of five hours, he was even confident that he knew more about the world than some of the people who were actually born here. Such was the intensity of how much effort he had put into learning about his new world. One thing he had read upon in the library was about the ten wizard saints, mages considered to be the top ten strongest wizards or mages in the entire continent, and Naruto recalled about how that white-haired woman, Mira if he remembered correctly, about how she called her master as one of the wizard saints. Even before his trip to the library, Naruto was interested even if just a bit in meeting the fairy tale master, but after his recent knowledge gain saying Naruto was much more interested was putting it lightly, mere curiosity had turned into a full blazing desire of wishing to meet the impressive mage, realizing the potential that came with having help from someone of such high standing. The former Jinchuriki would not complain about receiving help when he desperately needed it in this new environment. Mira squealed, barely withholding the urge to wrap the shinobi into another hug, as she smiled happily. I'm glad to hear that, who knows, you might even join our family and become a member of Fairy Tail. Maybe. Naruto smiled half-heartedly. The smile on Mira's face faded away as she gazed at him concernedly, having easily picked up upon his feelings. Hey, are you alright? Naruto nodded. I'll be okay, I'm just a lot of things about my life changed just recently, and I just need some time to get used to it sorry for bringing down the mood, I'm not usually this emo. Well if you ever need a hug or someone to talk to she sent him a warm genuine smile. Know that I'm more than happy to help with that. Naruto returned her smile with one of his own. Thank you Mira, I might take you up on that offer sometime soon. He felt a hand land and gently squeeze his shoulder, he turned towards the one responsible and saw a softly smiling Lucy. It goes without saying, but you can come to me too. The shinobi chuckled before nodding kindly. Thank you to you as well Lucy. His eyes twinkled with gratitude at the curvaceous blonde before he started to switch his gaze back and forth between the two girls, curiosity lighting his gaze as he pointed a thumbs towards the mass brawl going on behind him. By the way is this normal? Lucy sighed at the antics of her new guildmates, nodding tiredly towards the shinobi. Unfortunately. Mira giggled. You get used to it. I haven't yet, and I don't think I want to. The celestial wizard remarked, deadpanning at the curvy supermodel. Naruto had a perfect response in mind. Nor we have bad news. The sounds of doors slamming against the wall greeted his ears, everyone promptly turned towards the entrance, immensely curious about what Loki had to say. Loki panted before he looked up at the guild, a terrified look plastered on his visage. It's Urza. She's back. Immediately, fear gripped the heart of countless mages, almost all in fact many of them turning wide at the implication of Urza's return and what it would mean for them. Naruto and Lucy watched on curiously as everyone quieted down, a tense atmosphere settling in as the seconds passed by. Lucy in particular was shocked to see Natsu and Grey, two bitter rivals nervously hugging each other while fretfully eyeing the door. What's gotten into them? She asked while turning to the ivory-haired waitress. Mira smiled. They're scared of Urza, almost everyone here is in fact, she happens to be our strongest female mage, and unlike our master, she doesn't tolerate any behavior that she deems to be unprofessional and damaging to the guild's reputation. Wait so she disciplines everyone here? Lucy inquired, blinking owlishly. Yup. Naruto grunted. She must be something if just the mention of her name is capable of stopping a mass brawl. 
The sound of heavy boots landing on the pavement reached the ears of the fairy tale mages and shinobi, growing ever so louder with each passing thump. Lucy gulped as her imagination ran wild, visualizing some sort of giant or demon to emerge into the guild hall. She could not be any more mistaken as a beautiful human red head walked in, carrying with her a large horn over her shoulders. Naruto stared impassively, having seen and even done amazing feats of strength that far surpassed anything that the strongest female fairy tale wizard was capable of doing. Urza carefully set the horn on the ground, eyes narrowing dangerously at the various members of the guild. I have returned, and I have heard news of how Fairy Tail has been in all sorts of trouble in my absence, Master Makarov may tolerate your behavior, but I most certainly will not. The Queen of the Fairies then proceeded to scold each member one by one, while Mira and the blonde pair just watched on mutely. After lecturing around ten or so mages, the Queen of the Fairies then set her gaze upon one of the veteran wizards, lips pursed in disappointment. Macau. Urza thundered ominously, said blue-haired mage gulped and stood up straight when confronted with her imposing stare. She just shook her head and sighed. Please say something. Macau pleaded. Naruto couldn't blame him too much for his reaction. To have a woman scolding everyone but then just gaze disapprovingly at you when it was your turn that's just cruel. Where are Natsu and Grey? The aforementioned pair gulped before they directed the redhead's attention to them. Urza smiled pleasantly at the sight of the two rivals hugging one another. As much as I'd like to celebrate the fact that the two of you are getting along splendidly well, I'm afraid now is not the time for celebrations. I need the two of you to join me on an urgent mission. The two of us? Together? Grace stuttered. She nodded. Yes. Her eyes narrowed into a glare. I trust that won't be a problem, yes? No, no, of course not. Me and Natsu are best friends and can work well together, right Natsu? Hey, I. Natsu agreed, trembling before the presence of the Titania, off to the side Lucy looked on with wide eyes, utterly surprised to see the normally brave, almost irritatingly so fire mage become so meek and scared. Urza nodded approvingly, ignoring the hushed whispers that now erupted within the guild. Good, I expect you both to be ready to leave tomorrow at 8am sharp. With that, she whirled around and headed out, beautiful scarlet locks bouncing throughout her stride and effortlessly capturing the shinobi's attention. She's really pretty, scary but pretty. Lucy offhandedly mentioned, eyeing the retreating form of the strongest female fairy tale wizard. Naruto hummed in agreement. Urza, Natsu, and Grey. Those three together could be the strongest team to ever emerge out of fairy tale. Oh, that's so wonderful. Mira clasped her hands together and cried out happily. It should be interesting to see them in action sometime in the future. Naruto remarked. Mira nodded sweetly before she turned towards the blonde celestial mage, an apologetic glint nesting in her sea blue eyes. I'm sorry to have to ask this of you Lucy, but can you join them tomorrow? Uh, me Lucy pointed to herself. Mira nodded. Yeah, I'd like to ask that you go with them so you can try and manage them. Sort of. You know how those two can get. Well if you're the one who's asking me Lucy smiled bright at the supermodel. Then I suppose I don't mind too much. The former takeover mage beamed before wrapping the curvaceous blonde into a hug. Thank you Lucy, you're the best. Naruto closed his eyes, a small flush creeping up to his cheeks, he unintentionally caught sight of Mira's large breasts, squashing against Lucy's own large pair. He opened his eyes around approximately 10 seconds later, and though he'd deny it if someone confronted him about it, a small part of him was disappointed to not see the pair of breasts squished against one another any longer. Mira shifted her attention to the male blonde. In the meantime, please let me show you around and introduce you to everyone, they've all been quite eager to meet you ever since you arrived here. If you insist. Naruto shrugged, not possessing any reason currently to refuse her request. The curvy supermodel smiled beautifully in response, she reached out to grab his hand and. Are those whiskers real? And promptly dropped them as Kana appeared from out of nowhere, stepping into the surprised shinobi's personal space and examining his birthmarks with an intensity rivaling the heat of the sun. Time skip. 21 hours later, 2 o'clock p.m. Trouble was a funny thing. It had ways of barging into people's lives in ways that defied the comprehension of even the most intelligent of human beings. The casually drinking Naruto swiftly placed his mug on the table, ignoring the startled expression of the seated Kana beside him as he stood up and eyed his surroundings with a narrowing gaze. Something's not right. Kana eyed her new friend confusedly. Naruto is everything ourg. Boom. A sudden explosion rang out from the front of the guild's doorsteps, startling the wide-eyed and shocked mages within. Ominous laughter greeted the ears of everyone as a strangely dressed blonde man walked in, his appearance confounding all as he possessed what seemed to be cat ears, a furry tail, and odd black markings that covered his hands and wrists. Dackle grinned savagely, reveling in the astonished looks of the filthy humans before him. 
it seemed like he was not the only one who found the situation amusing as a giggle made itself known to everyone in the vicinity. I have to admit Jackal, your ability to create a dramatic entrance is dare I say quite impressive. A female figure emerged from out of the dust, her strange yet sensual appearance captivating the attention of all, as she smirked hotly before the crowd of still shell-shocked mages before her. Naruto narrowed his eyes before he quickly forced himself to be still, gathering natural energy as quickly as he could to enter sage mode. Did he need it? No, but the shinobi would be damned if he allowed any more deaths to be happening anytime soon. Dackle scoffed. It should come off as no surprise to you Kaioka, after all, I am the strongest demon in Tartarus behind Marjir after all. The now named Kaioka snorted at the claim, finding his declaration to be nothing more than hot air. Sure. She shook her head amusedly before she turned her attention to the masses of mages. Mages of Fairy Tylee want you all to know that what's gonna happen next isn't personal. Immediately the wizards of fairy tales snapped out of their shock, many of them gritting their teeth or clenching their fists in rage at the audacity of these monsters showing up and blowing up their door. Before anyone could formulate a response, two more demons emerged from the shadows to join Kaioka, standing on either side of the smirking sheet demon. Their appearances truly solidified to the fairy tale guild that they were not humans. The one on Kaioka's right possessing four arms, blue skin, a spiked head, and six tentacles for legs. It grinned sadistically, much to the discomfort of quite a few wizards. I am Ezel. The demon on Kaioka's left on the other hand was more humane in appearance, imposingly muscular and tall, but not to the extent of the tentacle demon, this one possessing waist-length dirty blonde hair, a full beard, a snout, and black markings, could be found on the outer side of his chest and all over his biceps, he crossed his arms and gazed impassively at the crowd. And I tempest her. And with the formalities out of the way, let's proceed. A bloodthirsty grin manifested at Jackal's lips as he slammed his palm on the floor, much to the confusion of the now tense and battle-ready fairy tale wizards. Wow. The following explosion that ensued shook the entire building and the mages within it. Naruto by chance looked up and spotted a large piece of debris about to fall right down on a pair of unsuspecting wizards. Reacting with almost instantaneous speed, he dashed towards the pair of mages, picked them up, and carried the startled mages away from the danger zone, and back towards the bar just in time as the debris smashed into the floor. Bam. Needless to say, the simultaneous feeling of both horror and relief welled up within the mages as they gazed at the spot they formerly stood in. Oh god. We would have just died. I don't know who you are man, but thank you for saving us. Naruto put them down, ignoring the wide eyes and astonished looks of the mages around him as he gazed off towards the entrance of the guild. Much to his and everyone else's dismay, it turned out that the invaders weren't arrogant enough to just come by themselves. How did Naruto and the mages of Fairy Tail arrive at such a grim conclusion? Namely because of the numerous dozens of bodies that ran into the destroyed entrance of the guild and towards the wizards of Fairy Tail, all the while letting out bloodthirsty battle cries. The number of dark mages charging inside the guild outnumbered the fairy tale mages 5 to 1, and that was not mentioning that their strongest and most capable mages were not around currently. But despite the terrible circumstances they were dealt with, that hardly stopped the wizards of fairy tale from releasing a battle cry of their own before they too charged and intercepted the dark mages in the middle of the guild. Sidestepping a fireball that flew by him, the shinobi quickly jumped onto the fray, taking out the masses of dark mages, starting with the one who blew that fireball at him. Punch, dodge, knee, kick, weave, elbow. Naruto danced as he fought the countless number of dark mages that kept flooding into the guild hall. Growing annoyed as whenever he knocked one out, two more followed before he struck them down too. Jumping to the side to dodge the clumsy elbow strike sent out by one of the remaining dark wizards, Naruto responded by throwing a nasty tornado kick that connected with the bastard's face before he was sent rocketing back into a group of five wizards on his six. Now done with the cannon fodder, Naruto sealessly created a clone that hid away in order to stealthily gather Senjutsu Chakra just in case. Turning towards the entrance of the guild, Naruto instantly had to duck down as a backfist, courtesy of that demon, Jackal if he remembered correctly, flew over his head. Dackel narrowed his eyes, raising his knee to slam into the human's face, only to be surprised as Naruto caught his knee, holding onto it with a tight grip as he spun a full 360 before hurling Jackal away. The explosive demon grunted as he skidded to the ground before he smirked and dove back in, thrusting a fist and smirking as Naruto raised a forearm and blocked it. What? Naruto's eyes widened in surprise as a yellow light emanated from Jackal's fist before a small explosion rang out and had him sliding back into the bar. Suppressing the urge to wince, Naruto ignored the pain flaring at his left slightly scorched arm as he glared at the smirking demon. I had thought his ability to somehow make explosions would only happen when his palm would land on something, obviously I made a mistake in doing so. 
discreetly eyeing his opponent's feet, the former Jinchuriki wondered if his ability could also be activated from his feet, he hadn't seen him do it till now but to be on the safer side, it's probably safe to assume that he can. Not wanting to give his opponent the ability to cause more destruction, and wanting to end this quick Naruto blitz towards Jackal, ducking underneath a punch, then slamming an uppercut at Jackal's sternum, before a left hook followed and landed on the demon's cheek. Spitting out blood and stumbling back a couple of steps, rage encompassed the explosive demon as he roared before he threw a roundhouse kick that Naruto bobbed underneath, before sending out a low kick that swept Jackal off the floor, with his back landing painfully on the ground. Groaning, he attempted to get up but was too slow as Naruto quickly got on top of him, his knee pinning the demon's left arm, while his left foot stomped on Jackal's wrist and kept it in place, Jackal desperately tried to free himself and failed as Naruto's sheer physical strength held him in place. Now having free reins to do as he wished, Naruto unleashed his fury upon the explosion demon, showering his face with a flurry of powerful punches that had Jackal seeing stars. Pulling back his right arm and enhancing it with potent chakra, Naruto tensed his fist and arg and paused, whirling towards the direction of the scream, and feeling his eyes widening in horror as the female devil from earlier was currently choking a hurt Marahin and holding her up against the wall. Evidently, Naruto wasn't the only one who heard it, as nearly everyone near her vicinity cried out the waitress's name in distress. Nichan. Elfman yelled, running towards the bar and swinging his transformed arm right into Kayoka's exposed back. Elfman gritted his teeth as Tempester appeared out of nowhere and blocked Elfman's punch before retaliating with a tornado-circling strike. Cyclone. He mumbled quietly. Immediately, Elfman along with the many mages behind him, both light and dark, were sent flying as a massive grey whirlwind exploded from Tempester's fist. The Elfman. Mira wheezed out, clawing and scratching at the arm that held her up to no avail. Suddenly, the air left her lungs as Kyoka buried her fist in her stomach. Did I say you could talk my beautiful little slave? Kyoka asked, a dark look permeating her gaze. Naruto gritted his teeth at the sight before he turned back towards Jackal and struck the demon with a powerful punch that knocked him out. Standing up and bringing his hands into the ram formation, a quiet whisper of Kage Bunshin caused 200 clones to materialize much to the shock of everyone present. Each clone knew their purpose and swiftly set out to either secure the safety of the citizens outside or help the wizards of Fairy Tail, immediately turning the tide of battle towards Fairy Tail's favor. Shifting his attention towards the cruel sheet demon, he took a step forward and had to quell the urge to smirk as a rush of natural power flooded his body, orange pigmentation appearing around the edge of his eyes, signifying him entering sage mode. With the immense boost in physical attributes, Naruto seemingly teleported to Kyoka's location and swiftly threw a kick that connected with her sides and sent the sheet demon plummeting far back. Naruto wasn't done as he quickly turned towards the nearby Tempester and sucker punched him away in his surprised state. Turning to Mira, he looked over her worriedly, ignoring the utterly shocked look on her visage as he scanned her body for injuries, grimacing at the purple bruising found on both her throat and on her stomach, where a piece of her cloth had been ripped out, presumably from Kayoka's claws. Naruto, you. Forming another shadow clone who immediately carried Mira away to safety, Naruto returned his attention back to the fray and had to weave to the side as a giant and utterly enormous yellow-furred man-wolf attempted to punch him. In that same moment when the man-wolf overextended his arm, Naruto quickly formed a one-handed Rasengan before slamming it into the demon's guts. Uh. Jackal cried out in pain before his form was sent skidding back. As much as the shinobi hated to admit it, he had to give the monster credit where it was due, as taking a Rasengan to the guts and still standing was an impressive accomplishment. You bastard. You think you can just beat me up then walk away. Naruto narrowed his eyes in suspicion before throwing a quick glance at the spot he had left the explosive demon earlier, seeing no body there confirmed his suspicion. Figures that he was not done. Raising his hand, the shinobi curled his palm in the classic come at me gesture and smirked as Jackal did exactly that. Jackal in his wolf form was decently fast, but unfortunately would have still come up short, even if barely, when Naruto would fight him in his base state. He wasn't being arrogant with that thinking, Naruto wasn't too sure about strength, but he knew he had the demon beat in speed even when in normal state. With his body now getting augmented by Senjutsu, Jackal stood no chance, and the shinobi proved it when he dodged the wolf demon's kick, then grasped onto the long limb, carrying the giant man wolf over his shoulder, before he slammed Jackal into the ground. Knowing that a normal Rasengan wouldn't do the job, Naruto swiftly created a giant Rasengan and was forced to jump away as a grey cyclone tore through the spot he had just been standing in before continuing onwards. Naruto grunted as he let the Rasengan dissipate, clicking his tongue in annoyance as Tempester stood side by side with the now standing Jackal. I don't need your help. Tempester shook his head stoically, never once looking away from the tense shinobi. 
don't be a fool jackal, it's quite obvious that whoever this individual is that he's in a league entirely different than our own, if he can throw us demons of Lord Zeref around like rag dolls. Jackal snarled. I was not being thrown around like a rag doll. Gregor Lessie have come to help since none of us can hope to win against him on our own, the only reason Kyoka and Ezel don't join us is because they have their hands full with the clones and everyone else. He stated. Don't slow me down. Jackal sprinted towards Blonde, the gap between the two closing rapidly as he brought a massive claw for a downward slash. Naruto leapt away before he was forced to create a clone that flung him away just in time for the clone to dispel due to the whirlwind that tore right through him. Deciding to be on the offensive for once, Naruto blitzed towards the massive humanoid lion demon, sidestepping the punch before he jumped and slammed his knee into Tempester's jaw before he followed it up with a cross right on the demon's snout. Arg! Tempester cried out as he stumbled back. Sensing the imminent danger behind him thanks to Sage Mode, Naruto instantly whirled around, grasping tightly onto the claws from either side that attempted to pierce his body, before he jumped and delivered a punishing front kick right at Jackal's face, before using it as a springboard to launch himself away, as Tempester accidentally slammed his fist into Jackal's already damaged visage. Oh! The explosive wolf demon clutched his nose, glaring heatedly at the apologetic-looking Tempester, before they both charged the blonde shinobi. Naruto, not one to wait, charged too, meeting them right in the center before he engaged them in combat, dodging, evading, and weaving through their strikes, before he returned their loving gestures of peace with his very own. To the outside viewer, it was as though Art had come to life and taken on a human form, stunning any on viewers watching the shinobi mesmerizingly move around, as though he was in an intricate elegant dance. It was beautiful. It was dare one say perfect. Onlithir was nothing beautiful or perfect about the way Jackal and even Tempester tried to fight back against the shinobi, only to fail miserably, as Naruto eluded their rage-filled attacks before retaliating. Stepping away from the extended fist, Naruto had no time to retaliate against Tempester, as Jackal tried his luck by swinging a hook that the shinobi already saw coming. Jumping 15 feet high, Naruto quickly formed an enormous Rasengan, the sheer size and brightness of it stopping everyone from fighting, so they could gaze at the stunning spectacle. Falling back down, Naruto twisted and turned so he was facing the ground before he thrust the massive Rasengan at the pair of demons. Arg! Arg! Arg. Twin screams rang across the guildhall as Naruto continued to grind the Rasengan downwards on the demons. Boom! The Rasengan exploded, dissipating and allowing the ex Jinchuriki to land on his feet. He stepped forward, eyeing the deep, large crater within and instantly taking note of the unconscious and heavily battered forms of Jackal and Tempester, all the while ignoring the baffled expressions of everyone present. They were something else, Naruto didn't know if the people of this world though he highly doubted it were really resilient, or if it was just these two demons in particular, but to have survived against a massive Rasengan and not well die, it was impressive, and Naruto had to at least credit them on that front. But impressive or not, Naruto was hardly in the mood to sing the pair of demons' praises when he had just gotten out of a war and lost virtually everything. Turning towards the direction of the last two demons, ice-cold rage gripped Naruto as he eyed and took note of the various fairy tail mages scattered around Kaioka and Ezel, taking note of the various injuries that littered their persons and growing only more rageful before he decided to end this. Now. Ignoring the shriveling cannon fodder fearfully rooted in their place, Naruto glared coldly at the shell-shocked Kaioko and Ezel. I will say this only once, surrender and I will be merciful. That snapped them out of their shock, Kaioka gritted her teeth and her companion. Merciful merciful Ezel, so infuriated by the idea that a human, a human, would be willing to show him mercy, instantly transformed into his most powerful form, glaring hatefully at the shinobi, while threateningly waving his four blade-like arms in an intimidation display. Stupid human. You won't get away with insulting me. I will keep you alive just so you could watch as I kill and eat your friends one by one. Naruto only continued to gaze in silence, hardly impressed with the threat after having faced the Juubi itself. Stilf galled to threaten these, narrowing his eyes dangerously, Naruto raised his palm upward, a blue glowing sphere forming above his hand, before four sharp blades protruded all around to form and look like a glowing shuriken. Nearly everyone inside winced and covered their ears as a loud screeching noise engulfed the guildhall. Once determining that the fairy tail mages were at a great distance away did Naruto finally make his move. Blitzing towards the blue-skinned Aetherius demon with incredible speed. Suddenly, the shinobi slid to the floor once a meter away from the demon, before throwing the race and shuriken upwards into his torso. Ezel was rocketed away immediately, disposed of in a matter of seconds, sent high into the sky with intense speed, nothing more than a dot in the vastness of blue. Boom. The following explosion was by far the largest explosion of the day. It was a spectacle to behold, a large dome of wind so powerful, so large, so bright, that the entire population of Magnolia witnessed it. 
even when the race and shuriken detonated from a long, far-flung distance away, everyone in Magnolia felt its power as the shockwaves blew nearly everyone off their feet and threatened to even undermine and destroy the homes and infrastructures of the city itself. The couple of seconds have passed before the blue dome began to dull, decreasing in size before ultimately dispersing into nothingness. Naruto shifted his torso to the last remaining demon, eyeing Kyoka with cold apathy as she gazed up at him with boundless terror. He stepped forward and she swiftly backpedaled, forgetting all about the various mages around her. Unfortunately, she backpedaled into a set of strong, sturdy legs. The quick glance up revealed that she crawled right into the legs of the brother of the girl she was choking earlier. So consumed by fear, Kyoka did nothing as Elfman frowned, hard for he pulled back his fist and instantly knocked her out with a thundering blow to the head with his beast arm. Iron Bull. Now, with their heavy hitters taken out and still reeling from the display of Naruto's destructive capabilities, all the dark mages swiftly raised their hands behind their heads and gave up, lot of good that did when the clones appeared behind them all and swiftly knocked them out before dispelling. It took a few seconds to comprehend that they won, but once they did, Fairy Tail exploded with a cheer, smiling and laughing in relief as they somehow, somehow managed to prevail against this terrible and dreadful circumstance. Unbeknownst to any of them, Naruto walked out, feeling tremendous guilt as he wondered if the dark mages attacking had anything to do with him being here. Four full days had passed since the unexpected incident that happened in Magnolia. Within a day, news of the great battle and of the capture of three demons from Tartarus, and roughly around 200 dark mages being captured, was brought to light. So big was the news that it even reached the ears of the king. After all, it wasn't every day that a prominent city housing a powerful guild such as Fairy Tail would get invaded by dark mages and demons of Zeref. Not mentioning the various other news that was heard, such as how all the strongest members of Fairy Tail were absent, and yet Fairy Tail still won against such overwhelming odds, about how there was numerous copies and replicas of one individual who was all around Magnolia, protecting the citizens from any dark mages, wishing to inflict torment upon them. And of course, there was simply no forgetting the massive explosion of blue light that threatened to destroy the city. The entire country was aware of the news, and seemingly that was all what anyone was talking about for the past few days. Naturally, the Magic Council was heavily alarmed and within hours of the incident, had a massive bastion of rune knights arrive in the city and interrogate every single person, be they citizens or fairy tale wizards. Once they learned of the reports of a powerful blonde mage who single-handedly was responsible for the defeating of the demons, protecting the citizens with his many dozens of clones, something that was unheard of in the history of magic, and being the one who launched that attack that caused that massive explosion. Saying that the rune knights went on a large manhunt the next day to find and interrogate Naruto was putting it lightly. They only stopped when the king who, knowing that arresting the savior of Magnolia was extremely bad in both ethics and publicity, interfered, ordering the council to cease their search and leave him alone, and leave him alone they did. But while the magic council and rune knights were unable to search for him, that didn't mean that others couldn't search for Naruto. Currently, Makarov Dreyer walked the woods, head overflowing with thoughts as he pondered about everything that had happened. Never in his wildest dreams and nightmares did he ever imagine something like this happening. It had only been around two to three hours after Lullaby was disposed of that Makarov along with his brats, seated at the train and still a couple of hours away from arriving back at their hometown, were notified by Mira of what happened. Needless to say, Makarov along with Urza, Natsu, Grey and Lucy, grew horrified at the news, and it was only after Mira, in an attempt to calm the tense and visibly worried master from further sinking into worry, showed the state of every mage who had been around when the Dark Guild suddenly attacked. Seeing his children alive and mostly in good health helped lessen his worries considerably, but that didn't stop Makarov from wanting to see them in person or from demanding and probing for every single detail of the incident. Once they arrived, Makarov alongside the newly created and hopefully temporary team, Makarov prayed beeline for the guild. Though the guild hall was in such a heavily damaged state, Makarov could care less, only feeling tremendous relief at the knowledge that his family was alive and safe. And from his understanding, he owed it all to the young man who had been lying unconscious for a few days. Wanting to profusely thank the young man who saved and protected his family, Makarov was dismayed to learn from an equally distraught Mira that Naruto had left when no one was looking. Days had passed since then. Days in which the master of fairy tale was either busy reconstructing the guild alongside his mages or having to be privately spoken to by the council, who, to the elderly wizard saint's delight, were forced to cease their interrogation thanks to the king. God bless the king of Fiori. But of course, when he wasn't doing either of those things, he was getting chewed out by Pryusika for sending every single one of his mages who had been involved in the invasion towards her. Was he overreacting? Probably. But he didn't regret it. All that mattered was that his brats were safe from the dark guilds and demons of Zeref. Speaking of. 
A rigid frown tugged Makarov's lips as he thought of the three demons who he learned from Yajima belonged to the Dark Guild Tartarus. To think the Tartarus was comprised of only demons from the Book of Zeref was worrying. Even more worrying was the fact that they actually had the nerve to attack his guild when he was away. The normally subdued fire in his pits grew to a smoldering firestorm as Makarov fumed angrily, it didn't matter if all ended well with his brats alive, and three demons along with a little over 200 dark mages were captured. The fact that Tartarus attacked his family. He wasn't gonna let them get away with this. Are you alright old man? Snapped out of his thoughts, Makarov stopped walking as he tossed his gaze on the right, blinking in surprise when he recognized the young blonde-haired man standing back against the tree. I'm alright, just a little vexed from the incident a few days ago. MHMM, I can imagine so. Getting off the tree stump, Naruto slowly walked over to the elderly wizard saint before he stood only a foot away. I'm Naruto Uzumaki. Makarov smiled kindly in greeting. Makarov Drear. I know. Makarov chuckled. Seems like we both were already aware of each other my boy, Kinda makes the whole introduction all but moot. Naruto couldn't help but chuckle as well. You don't say. That said I am glad and relieved to have finally found you, I have been meaning to talk to you for quite some time now. Makarov admitted. Naruto nodded in understanding. Same here, it's why I haven't left Magnolia, and why I sought you out actually taking a moment to breathe, the shinobi decided to just go out with it. I've been wanting to apologize to you. The third master of fairy tale narrowed his eyes in confusion. Apologize. For what? He asked incredulously before shaking his head. You have done nothing wrong my boy, in fact you did everything right, and mere words failed to convey just how grateful I am to you for protecting my family and my city. There is a possibility that Naruto clenched his eyes shut before he opened them once more. That would happen, happened because I was there anything supports that theory currently, but from my understanding, something like this was extremely unlikely, and it only happened days after I wa I will stop you right there. Naruto blinked as Makarov interrupted him, a frown plastered on the man's elderly visage. Here's what I know, in my absence and in the absence of our strongest mages, my children were left facing against four powerful demons, along with roughly 200 dark mages. With such odds, most, if not all of them would have been gravely injured at best, kidnapped or killed at worst. Makarov took a moment to breathe, trying to calm his thundering heart, as he was very much aware of what he came close to losing four days ago. It wasn't that he didn't have faith in his children, he did, but he also needed to look at things from a realistic point of view and realistically, with those odds and the fact that Fairy Tail's strongest members were not present, excluding Mira, who lost the ability to utilize her abilities, the situation could not have been any more dire for Fairy Tail than it had been on that day. If not for you, that most definitely would have been the Kasei heard every single detail from everyone, how you carried Macau and Wakaba away when a large piece of debris was gonna fall on them, how you took Mira to safety after saving her from a demon that was strangling her. The dozens of thought projections that somehow had physical form and were fighting alongside everyone else. The fifth-ranked wizard saint laid a grateful hand on Naruto's shin. You protected my family many mages would have fled had they been in your place, but you didn't, you protected my kids, and for that I will always be indebted to you. Thank you Naruto. Makarov said in a low tone, his quiet voice adding a depth to his gratitude that the shinobi could nearly not fathom. Naruto frowned softly, not feeling worthy of the elder's appreciation. Yeah but they wouldn't have needed protecting if I wasn't there in the first place. Such a situation brought back memories. Yes. It had been less than three months ago that Kanoha had been invaded by Nagato and reduced to rubble because the Rinnegan user had been looking for him. Everyone may have said otherwise, but Naruto knew that he was partly responsible for the devastation of his home. Makarov shook his head lightly. We don't know for certain if that's the case, but even if it was, I don't blame you. You didn't ask for this and I reiterate this again, you protected my family when so many others would have abandoned them and fled for their life. Well Naruto rubbed the back of his head a little sheepishly, having not expected such a heartfelt and genuine response. I'm glad that you're not angry with me. Amusement tinted Makarov's gaze as he smiled at the blonde. I most certainly am not, that said, if you really do want to make me happy, then come walk with me back to Fairy Tail and share with me a drink. Everyone's been dying to talk to you. Naruto took a moment to contemplate the choice before he made up his mind. I suppose there's no harm in seeing everyone. Not at all my boy. The wizard saint responded back cheerfully. I know quite a few of my brats were sad that you left so abruptly, now that is the only thing that you did wrong in my opinion. The shinobi winced at the scolding tone. I know it was wrong to leave without saying anything, but in my defense, I felt very guilty and couldn't be around any of them when their injuries were staring me in the face. Makarov sighed. Kids nowadays, they always love to complicate things. A tick mark formed on Naruto's forehead. I'm not a kid old man. I'm 18. Makarov laughed. That's a kid's age to me. 
whatever. Naruto rolled his eyes. And while we're heading back, perhaps you'd be willing to entertain me with a story or two. Naruto tried desperately to not smile, but failed as the old man's mood was infectious. Are you sure, all my stories are pretty long. Makarov laughed as he walked back towards the direction of Fairy Tail, Naruto flanking him on his right. Then it's a good thing that we have a long walk ahead of us. So this part ends here. Alright that's it for today's video guys, let me know in the comments section how was the story, and also don't forget to like, share and subscribe. I will meet you in another video, bye bye.